Jeffrey A. Lieberman, Shrinks, The Untold Story of Psychiatry. Embark on a fascinating journey through the turbulent history of psychiatry as we explore Shrinks, The Untold Story of Psychiatry by Jeffrey A. Lieberman. Dive deep into the often horrifying history of asylums and examine the work of early reformers like Philippe Pinel and Benjamin Rush, who sought to humanize the treatment of mental illness. Discover the various questionable treatments and theories of the past, and witness the rise and influence of Sigmund Freud's psychoanalysis. Be prepared to delve into the controversies surrounding psychiatry and the impact of technological advancements on the field. The History of Humane Psychiatry Mental health treatment was once appalling, with patients being locked up in tiny cells, beaten, and publicly displayed like freaks. Thankfully, reformers like Pinel and Rush led the charge in the 18th and 19th centuries to create a more humane approach, emphasizing clean housing, fair treatment, and manual tasks to promote self-mastery. Their efforts paved the way for modern psychiatry, although there remains much work to be done. The Unfortunate History of Mental Health Practices This summary explores the unique attempts of three psychiatrists to cure mental illness using circulation and energy flow theories, with disastrous results. In the past, Benjamin Rush believed that the root of mental illness was disrupted blood circulation in the brain and attempted to address this by spinning schizophrenic patients in a rotational chair until they became dizzy. Similarly, Franz Mesmer attempted to cure energy blockages that he thought caused mental illness by using hypnotism to uncover energy flow issues. This resulted in temporary cures and a following of patients. However, when examined by a scientific committee in Paris, his methods were denounced. Later, Wilhelm Reich believed that mental illness resulted from an insufficient flow of cosmic energy. He called this energy orgones and thought that the cure involved releasing orgone energy in the body. His methods involved spending time in a wooden box that supposedly collected cosmic energy to address this. Overall these efforts resulted in dangerous and ineffective treatments. The history of mental health practices may have been rough, but we have since progressed to become better informed about mental health and to create more effective treatments. Freud's Revolutionary Theory in the late 19th century, psychiatry lagged behind other fields of medicine, but Freud's revolutionary theory changed everything. Freud's approach to psychiatry placed the subconscious mind at the center, postulating that our subconscious has a life of its own hidden from our waking consciousness. He proposed that our mind has three components, the ID, the source of selfish desires and instincts, the ego, which ensures that our impulses are expressed in an acceptable manner and the superego, which incorporates moral standards we've learned. Freud's ideas captivated many people, and his theory became the basis for modern psychoanalysis. Freud's Theory of Mental Illness Sigmund Freud believed that inner conflicts between the ID, ego, and superego could lead to mental illness. While individuals normally cope with these conflicts through sublimation or denial, some may develop disorders when these mechanisms fail. Freud's talking therapy, which involves patients discussing their innermost thoughts and dreams, helped them understand their conflicts and experience transference with their therapist. The Rise of Psychoanalysis in America Freud's psychoanalytic theory, which became popular in Europe, took some time to gain ground in the United States. By the 1930s, it had become a mass phenomenon. Psychoanalysts, including Adler, fleeing from Nazi Germany and Austria, established institutes and obtained professorships at leading U.S. universities. Psychoanalytic theory suggested most people would benefit from therapy, leading to an increasing number of people seeking help in private practices. By the 1960s, almost every major psychiatric position was occupied by a psychoanalyst, with the core of all psychiatry training being psychoanalytic theory. The American Psychological Association, APA, played a vital role in promoting psychoanalysis in the United States, with the psychoanalytic section established in 1934 and most of the APA presidents being psychoanalysts for 48 years. Psychoanalysis, an unscientific methodology. 
Freud's psychoanalysis theory of psychiatric illness was not based on scientific evidence and was more faith-based. Later psychoanalysts also propounded unbacked theories that blamed parents for mental illnesses. However, these creative explanations were not enough to successfully treat severe mental illnesses, and patients continued to suffer. Sigmund Freud's theory of psychiatric illness provided a coherent explanation for mental illnesses and a new kind of therapy. However, psychoanalysis soon faced its own set of problems. Rather than being based on scientific evidence, psychoanalysis was more faith-based and dogmatic. Freud's assumptions were not to be questioned, and scientific rigor was discouraged. Later psychoanalysts continued to propound theories that were unsupported by significant scientific evidence. They blamed parents for various mental illnesses, including schizophrenia, autism, and psychosis. However, these creative explanations were inadequate in treating severe mental illnesses. In fact, Freud himself declared that psychoanalysis was unsuitable for treating psychosis. Despite this, psychoanalytic hospitals opened, but they failed to remedy psychosis with talk therapy while patients continued to suffer. In summary, psychoanalysis has been shown to lack scientific rigor, and its theories were not based on significant scientific evidence. The Dark History of Mental Disorder Treatment In the early 20th century, patients with severe mental disorders were subjected to questionable treatments. Julius Wagner Jareg used fever to cure psychosis, infecting patients with germs or malaria parasites. While some improved, others died or suffered from malaria. Antonio Moniz and Pedro Lima conducted lobotomy, surgically damaging patients' frontal lobes to make them compliant. Lobotomized patients became easier to handle, but their personalities were destroyed, reducing them to zombie-like beings. Despite their controversial methods, both Wagner Jaureg and Moniz received a Nobel Prize for their work. Walter Freeman later developed his form of lobotomy, performing procedures on 2,500 patients. Shocking Therapy The use of electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, to treat mental illness has come a long way since its inception in 1938. Before ECT, psychiatrists induced seizures with insulin, metrazole, and other drugs. While effective in relieving symptoms, these approaches came with significant side effects, including brain damage, obesity, and even death. ECT, on the other hand, delivers electric shocks to targeted areas of the brain under anesthesia and muscle relaxants, making it a safer and more effective treatment for severe cases of schizophrenia, depression, and mania. Though controversial, ECT continues to be a valuable tool in treating mental health conditions. The Evolution of Modern Psychotropic Drugs From Milltown to Lithium, How Psychotropic Medications Revolutionized Mental Health Treatment The development of psychotropic drugs revolutionized the treatment of mental illnesses. Before 1950, psychiatrists had limited options to calm patients, and patients treated with morphine or other sleep-inducing medications could not return to normal life in society. However, the arrival of the first modern tranquilizer, meprobamate, also known as Miltown, changed everything. This drug alleviated anxiety without causing drowsiness and was the first psychotropic blockbuster, with up to one in three prescriptions in the United States for meprobamate in 1956. The next major breakthrough came with the arrival of chlorpromazine, an anti-allergic medication that proved effective in calming patients with schizophrenia. Chlorpromazine had such an impact that in the same year of its release, the asylum population dropped as long institutionalized patients showed enough improvement to be discharged from hospitals. Soon, other drugs emerged to alleviate affective disorders, including imipramine, the world's first antidepressant. For patients cycling between deep depression and extreme elation, antidepressants were not suitable. In 1949, Australian physician John Cade found that lithium carbonate stabilized his patients' moods, leading to FDA approval in 1970 and becoming the first-line medication for bipolar disorder treatment. Today, psychotropic drugs continue to advance, playing a critical role in improving the quality of life of those suffering from mental illnesses. Psychiatry and its Public Perception 
the role of psychiatry as portrayed in popular culture and challenged by critics. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, a 1970s film about a man committed to a mental institution, is an example of how popular culture has shaped public perception of psychiatry. While mental health professionals were already questioning their own practices, psychiatrist Thomas Says challenged the notion of mental illness altogether with his book, The Myth of Mental Illness. Zaz believed that psychiatrists were inventing illnesses to provide treatments that lacked scientific backing, and that odd behavior was simply a reaction to societal issues rather than a symptom of mental illness. In 1973, psychologist David Rosenhan conducted an experiment which produced shocking results. Eight individuals pretending to hear voices were admitted into psychiatric institutions and claimed they no longer heard voices upon admission. Despite showing no signs of psychiatric illness, they were diagnosed with schizophrenia and kept in the institutions. This led Rosenhan to conclude that psychiatric hospitals were unable to distinguish between the sane and insane, and sparked public outrage. Zaz and Rosenhan's work challenged the authority of psychiatry and influenced a generation of anti-authoritarian youth. Their ideas remain relevant today as debates about psychiatric practices continue. The Struggle for Objective Psychiatric Diagnoses The anti-psychiatry movement discredited the credibility of psychiatrists as their diagnoses were based on vague psychoanalytic concepts. In an effort to establish objective diagnoses, the APA purged these influences and started relying on observable symptoms and temporal courses of illnesses. This systematic approach ensured that physicians made consistent diagnoses regardless of their theory background. Advancements in Mental Illness Treatment After decades of searching for a bodily cause of mental illness, advances in genetics and neuroimaging have revolutionized treatments. MRIs have shown that patients with severe depression have smaller hippocampuses, while genetic research has uncovered the influence of family on schizophrenia. People with mental illness often have too many or too few copies of certain genes, leading to a disrupted balance in the brain. This discovery has led to more personalized treatments, such as glycine supplements, and opened up a brighter future for psychiatry. In conclusion, Shrinks, the untold story of psychiatry, exposes the rocky and dramatic origins and development of psychiatry as a field, unveiling the improvements and failures along the way. From its bleak beginnings in filthy asylums to radical ideas and treatments, the book highlights the revolution in mental health treatment thanks to the scientific approach and the advent of genetic research and imaging technologies. While acknowledging the controversial past of psychiatry, Lieberman expresses optimism for the future of the field, as new discoveries and innovations continue to shed light on the intricacies of the human mind and mental illness.